Good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are in this world and what time zone that you are in. And watching us there. Maybe <laughs> you're not watching right at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, but we are here for those who are local. We're so glad to be with you today. I just wanted to make sure you could see my face. Some of you know that I did test positive this week. And I'm doing great. So that's the benefit of being able to have a home service in quarantine with Pastor, <laughs> is that I can still be a part, even Amen. though I'm not near you. We love you, and we're so glad to be here. And uh, Nothing's going to shut down the message of good news. Amen. Come on. Absolutely. So I just wanted to bring uh, a few scriptures to you to begin, because I do know that there are many families who have at least one member who may be uh, dealing with the COVID virus or the flu or something else. And I want to equip you with what it takes to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might and not your own when you're feeling weak. So I want to share with you some of the foundational things we learned when we became Christians. And I think it's important to review them, especially maybe some of you are brand new to the kingdom of God and you haven't heard how to process uh, the scriptures when you need help in an area. So let's talk about healing today, okay? So one of the things that I wrote down was you need to find scriptures that mean something that are personal to you in the season you're in. God's going to just like make them blow up off the page so that you feel so connected to it and you know he's speaking to your heart. So I wrote down, I called to you for help and you healed me. That's out of Psalm 30 in Love verse that. 2. I love that. The Father told me this morning, that by the power of His Spirit, He yearns, He yearns to be your Father. He yearns to be your provider. He yearns to be your comforter. He yearns. It's the yearning of His heart. Absolutely. So He's waiting for you to call out. He wants to be your first responder. Amen. Another thing you can do is find a scripture with a promise. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's the promise, and that's in Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. So not only does God tell you what to do, he says, come to him. Yes. And how do you know if you're supposed to come? Do you have any burdens? Are you feeling heavy or weighted down? Yeah. Are you and, tired? Yes. And then the promise is attached. I will give you rest. So that's a really important thing to find in the word of God. You know why this is so important? The Lord, I was praying, going down the highway the other day, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, not believing what my wife is saying, not believing the word of God, is actually dishonoring God. Yes. It's disrespecting God when we don't believe. That's what the enemy did. That's what Satan did. Lucifer in heaven, he dishonored God by not believing and trusting. And so did Adam and Eve, and they lost their garden. God wants to give you a garden. But the way that happens is by honoring him and trusting him. We know that scripture says the way to please, bring pleasure to the heart of God, is to believe him. And the enemy works to shut down that belief, to fill you with doubt and unbelief. And so the Lord really wants us to move forward and say, no, no, no. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and I'm going to honor my God and I'm going to believe him no matter what I've seen or what I'm seeing or what I'm experiencing right now. I am not going to dishonor my father. I am going to honor him and trust him and believe in him no matter what. Amen. And this is where, you know, we have to take our feelings and we have to set them aside. We recognize that they are there, but we have to say the word of God supersedes what I may be feeling right now. God, I know you care about my feelings, so I bring them to you, but I don't let them rule right now my thought process and what I'm doing about it. Yep. And that's what faith really is. Yep. You know, faith is believing the words that you just said out of the Bible absolutely. versus the words of the world, the voice of circumstances we listen to one voice or the other because we're voice activated right. and our feelings come from those voices that we're listening to. So the Lord wants to really do something brand new in your life, even a double portion goodness in your life. But the Lord is saying, I just need you to take a step, a little bit more step into a diligence of saying no to certain words that need to be let go so you can operate in the faith and in the expectation 
and watch what happens. That's right. That's right. A few weeks ago, I did a message on Selah, which means pause and think about that. So that's what we're doing. We're taking the Word of God. We're chewing on it. We're digesting it so that those promises become very real to us and we stand on them and our life is founded on them. And then it becomes like concrete. It hardens and we have a foundation. One of the biggest things I learned becoming a Christian was to find those type of scriptures and memorize them. And I, I wrote one down. I actually memorized the um, Isaiah 53 version, but in 1 Peter 2.24. So Isaiah prophesied it in the First Testament. And in 1 Peter 2.24, we hear it again. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds... In other words, by the stripes that Jesus bore on his back, you were healed. That's your promise for healing. So when I didn't feel well the other day, what immediately rose out of my spirit after my feelings were something I had to sort of, as I said, set aside and allow the Word of God to come and fill me and say, He was wounded for our transgressions. Yeah, yeah. But by his stripes, I am healed. Those things that I digested came up out of me. And that's why the Word of God is so important for you to know. I just have one more before Pastor starts. Find scriptures with declarations. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares who? The Lord, it says. That's in Jeremiah 30, 17. So, we want scriptures where God is actually declaring over your life because we know his declarations yeah. are true. They are yes and amen. They are solid. Yeah, one of the greatest principles is come into agreement with the word of God and stay in agreement. Come into agreement and stay in agreement. Come into agreement and stay in agreement. Think about a plug going into an outlet. Yeah. If you just plug it in and unplug it and plug it in and unplug it, then you're not going to have the, the sustenance, the lasting effect. You won't even have the impact of consistent light or whatever appliance is being. Yeah. So that consistency of oneness keeps the power flowing. Absolutely. So we really felt like this year, I know last year we had one word we felt the Lord was having us launch from, and that was the word fortify. And we just really digested that and looked at different dimensions of it all through 2021. But this year, we really feel like the Lord is giving us a prescription of every 30 days, He's going to give us a word. And that word for the beginning of 2022 is oneness. So I know Pastor has a lot to minister concerning that today. <laughs> and I just wanted to give an introduction and let you know that I am doing well. Thank you for your prayers. Well, that was the anointed appetizer by the Glory Girl. Amen? So here we are. Are you ready? Are you on the edge of your seat? Do you have a notebook? You know, the Lord, the Lord told me this morning, one of the things I love doing is, is when I wake up, I don't move. I just lay in bed and say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And he always says, start the day in thankfulness, start the day in, in praise. And that opens up the door. And one of the things he said as I process, as I lay there in bed, he said that, that dishonor causes familiarity, that familiarity causes comes from dishonor. That's what Jesus, that's what Jesus, what happened to Jesus, what he was sharing to me, is it happens in marriages, it happens in relationships with God, it, it stops a quality connection of oneness, uh, and we don't realize it, but familiarity can cause dishonor and stop provision and even miracles. Jesus only did a few miracles in his hometown because of the sin of familiarity. They dishonored him because they knew him in the natural. They didn't know him in the supernatural. And that was just one thing that God spoke to me. And I'm just giving you that as a testimony because this is so exciting of a subject for me to talk about out of a testimony of practicing oneness, practicing walking with God. And that's really what we're talking about. Oneness is walking with God on a daily basis. It's not talking about being religious and just going to church, but every day, what is the Father saying to me? Holy Spirit, what does the Father Jesus want me to know right now? A living, vibrant, inspiring relationship. There's, there's no greater relationship than that. That's the foundational, inspirational that you want to build your life on. And, and then 
natural relationships can be inspiring, but what if a natural relationship stops being inspiring? What if I'm just not a, a very Inspired good husband? <laughs> Is she going to lose her joy and peace and inspiration? No, not if her inspiration, her source of inspiration, her source of strength, her source of joy, her source of peace comes from a oneness with her heavenly father who yearns, who yearns to be her father, her source of life and strength and joy and everything else that she needs. And, and the Lord wants us to come into a greater revelation that that's the truth. He yearns to be your everything. He yearns to be your everything. And the enemy tries to keep that revelation from you and keep us from walking in that revelation that causes oneness. So let me give you a quick, uh, couple quick scriptures in review before I go too deep here. We're talking about oneness, walking with God. John 15. Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about it? Why does God say the things that he says? And why does he teach us how to do them? Because there's benefits in doing it. There's the what, then there's the why or the benefits, and then there's the how. And God is the supernatural teacher that wants to teach us so we can experience abundant joy, abundant peace, no matter what's going on. All joy and all peace. I know you've heard me say that before, but it's a reality. We can have all joy and all peace, according to Scripture, from the God of hope if we exercise our faith and keep believing. There's a Father who loves me. I'm not an orphan. He wants to lead me and guide me and help me and provide for me and comfort me and strengthen me and teach me and give me wisdom and understanding every single day. That's the exciting life that you can have, the exciting life of faith. And that's what God wants us to go into 2022 with that kind of attitude. So John 15, Jesus says, hey guys, I'm the vine and you're the branch. And the way life is going to be abundant is if you have this oneness, if you have what the, the Passion Translation says is the life union. I love that word. The life union. We're not talking about a religious, oh, I don't even know what the word is, dry, boring, nothing thing. It's a, it's a life union relationship with a living God who loves you. He doesn't sleep or slumber. He's working on your behalf. He's fighting for you when you're sleeping. And he's standing on the side of your bed waiting for you to wake up, waiting for you to say, Father. Yeah, and then he just wants to say, yes, son. Yes, daughter. That's the way God wants it to be. Because, see, we were sent here from heaven. This isn't our real home. We're, we're, like, we're like soldiers that were sent to Afghanistan or, or overseas, but our real home is America. That's what it's like for a Christian. There's a home that we were sent from, and like a soldier, there's a home that we're going back to. That's the exciting paradigm and perspective that God wants us to live in because then you're constantly inspired by the truth that will keep you free from anything on this earth that would try to bind you up. And then in Psalm 1, it says, the testimony of the writer says, Happy is the man who followed the advice and instructions of the Heavenly Father. He will be like a tree planted beside streams of water that there's fruit in season and whose leaf in every season and whose leaf does not wither. How would you like your joy not to wither, your peace not to wither? Yes. It gets even better. Because sometimes it withers and sometimes until we start maturing and get more diligent in this oneness thing, it does wither. But here's, here's good, good news. The mercy of God that he's ready to lift you up. He's ready to lift you up. He's ready to lift, he's ready to lift you up today if you'll receive what's being said. If you, would, if you would open the door to your heart and receive what's being said and say, oh, it just sounds like some car salesman with some kind of hype. No, you need to set that aside because that's not the truth. You have a man and woman in front of you with a heart of God that wants to see you blessed. 
And we're here to communicate out of a life union with Him. So you would make it a priority, oneness, a life union with Him. And be like that tree next to the streams of living water where your fruit is manifesting more and more and more and more. That's the possibility because Scripture says we can go from glory to glory, strength to strength. That's possible when you walk and you make this oneness with Him a priority. So that's a quick review. Today, in as, as few minutes as I can, with an impartation into your heart, we're talking about oneness to, the second week on oneness, the Elisha principle. This comes right out of the book of life, 2 Kings chapter 2. I love this story, and you're going to love this story. If it's reviewed, great. Just rejoice that you're getting to hear it another time. If it's first time, then put on your seatbelt, because it just gets gooder. 2 Kings Chapter 2. The time had come. The time had come. Oh, I gotta stop right there. Because the time has come. Yes. The time has come. Today, the time has come. This is the day of salvation. This is the day to say yes to Jesus. This is the day to, to believe. This is the day to be cleansed from all unforgiveness and unbelief and doubt. This is the day. The time had come for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. God wants to take you up and out. This is the time. This is the time. He wants to take you up and out. All he wants you to do is believe that this could be the time. This could be the time, just like it was in a different way for Elijah. This is a true story. This isn't Disney. This is a true factual story. Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal, and Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. The Lord is sending me on to Bethel. But Elijah replied, no, 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 no. As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? And he said, yes, I know. This is Elisha speaking. Yes, I know. Be quiet. See, Elijah was the mentor of Elisha. Elisha was the protege of his mentor, Elijah. So, so Elisha says to the sons of the prophets, be quiet. Elijah, Elijah said to him, Elisha, this is the mentor speaking to the protege, Elijah, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. See, what was going on here, we're not talking about disobedience of a protege to a mentor. We're not talking about that. We're talking about that the mentor was actually testing his protege to see how committed he was, whether he would stay in oneness, oneness with his mentor, no matter where his mentor went, whether it looked good, whether it looked bad, whether it was scary, whether it looked comfortable. He said, I'm with you as long as you're alive. And that's the kind of faith and that's the kind of commitment that God is looking for his. That's the faith and that's the commitment of a disciple. See, there's believers and there's disciples. A di disciple says, as long as the Lord lives and he lives forever. <laughs> he died, but he was resurrected and he's not going to die because he lives forever. As long as my Jesus lives, as long as my father lives, as long as the Holy Spirit is here, alive, leading and guiding me, I will follow you. That's what the Lord is looking for. And then looks what, look at what happens when we walk in that kind of uh, uh, commitment that causes maturity. It's so awesome. And he says, to, uh, he says to Elijah, Elijah, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. But Elijah said, as, Lord, as, as the Lord lives, nor, notice his focus was on the Lord. Just like I was talking about, the, his foundation was the Lord. And he knew the Lord, and he knew the Lord was saying, I'm going to value this mentor, and I am not leaving him as long as he's alive. His foundation was the Lord. It wasn't a person. It wasn't a mentor. But he appreciated him, and he honored him because he believed he had the heart of God, and God sent him into his life, and he was committed to the Lord, and he was committed to that mentor. And so he kept pressing into this oneness, and he says, 
Uh, as, as long as the Lord lives, as, as long as you're alive, I will not leave you. So then they went to Jericho. Then the sons of the prophets came again. Can you say again? Do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? He said, yes, I know. Be quiet. Notice this. Here's a, here's a major point. Oneness will always be tested by different things. By different things, and it could be several. And some of them could seem very innocent and subtle. Just like the voice of the snake in the Garden of, of Eden. It seems so subtle and so innocent. Are you sure? God said... You know, just like dripped in unclean spirit. These sons or prophets are coming to him and they are really, they're not speaking the word of the Lord. They're, they're actually, they're actually trying to put fear in him to disconnect from his mentor. And that's one of the strategies still alive today that the enemy tries to make us afraid and disconnect the Holy Spirit wants to give us courage and boldness and faith and say, as long as God lives, I will walk in oneness with God. That's what he wants us to say. He wants us to recognize the innocent, unclean voices that try to disconnect us. Whether it's in pleasure or in pain, that voice tries to come to disconnect us from our source of life. And a lie jump was the source of that Elisha needed on this earth beside his relationship with the Lord. So it goes on to say, again, they come to him, and, they, and he, again, he says, be quiet to the sons of the prophet. He wasn't deceived by the voice, and that's what the Lord wants to give you. Revelation and inspiration and motivation and clarity between what voice you are is speaking into your ear, speaking to your heart, so you can identify because there's there's a voice that sometimes you need to say, like Elisha said, now you be quiet. Now you be quiet. He knew it doesn't say in the word, he knew in his spirit that they were trying to separate him from his mentor. And that's what that voice tries to do. And so I pray right now that you have that revelation, you have that clarity, that you can identify what voice is speaking to you so you don't lose your life-giving, life union with the one that loves you more than anyone else, the Father, the Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit who came from heaven, died for you, paid the price for your sin. And once we put our faith in Jesus, we have a life union with him, empowered by the Holy Spirit, filled with his spirit. We can walk in the power that, that Elijah walked in when we keep that diligent focus on not only the Lord, but what the Lord is saying through a teachable spirit through, from those that God has sent into our life. Those two sources that have have your best interests at heart, are designed to help you walk in oneness. Our goal as leaders is to bring you into that oneness with Him and help you walk in the humility of oneness with leaders that love you just like God loves you so you are in a safe place constantly. And that's what the Lord has for you. So it goes on to say, again, the prophet says, we're going to Jordan. But Elijah says again, as long as the Lord lives, notice the, 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 the tests that are going on here. So the two of them went on, and again, 50 men. It increases. It, does just, it doesn't say, honey, the sons of the prophets. It says 50, 50 from the sons of the prophets came and stood facing them from a distance. 50 came, <laughs> and Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up. Because, see, when you walk in oneness with the God, I'm so excited I'm having a hard time sitting down. See, 50 men came because his diligent focus, the, the mentee's diligent focus on his mentor, on the, what the Lord was saying to him, created such an atmosphere that more the sons of the prophet came to watch what God was going to do. That's the impact that your life can have when you practice that focus, that diligent focus that I'm going to walk by the grace of God, for the glory of God. I'm going to walk in the oneness that Elisha walked in with the, with the Lord and with Elijah. Then what ends up happening, it will draw people to see what God does next. It's all about 
helping people taste and see the goodness of God. That's when people change their mind, and that's what we're called to do. We are called to be distributors of his goodness, and that happens when we practice this lifestyle of oneness with the one that loves us more than anybody else, the one that will never reject you, abandon you, or forsake you, or has ever forgot about you. Matter of fact, he's your creator, and he puts you here on earth with a divine purpose, and that first part of your divine purpose is to walk with the one that loves you more than anybody else and it's done through faith in Jesus bam now let's continue and finish this off so Elijah uh, says uh, excuse me Elijah took his mantle rolled it up struck the waters which parted to the right and to the left and then the two of them crossed over on dry ground here's the note as you practice this oneness with God and you don't quit, no matter whether it's pleasure that's trying to get you out of this oneness or pain that's trying to get you out of this uh, oneness, if you don't quit and you continue to walk with the Spirit of God and those that He's called you to walk with, then you will cross over into a whole new season. You will see the miracles of God. You will see the power of God. And other people will too because of your influence in their life. And so the waters part, and then the and then the mentor says to the mentee, Elijah says to uh, Elijah says to Elisha, um, it says he says, now what can I do for you? After after notice after they crossed over after 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 Elijah had passed his test, so to speak, after he had passed. All the possibilities, the hocus pocus of the enemy to disconnect from the Lord and disconnect from his mentor. He succeeded in getting past all the hocus pocus. He continued in his Holy Ghost focus. And then the mentor says, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? And I hear the Lord saying to those that have been practicing this oneness, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? See, there's different people that I'm ministering to today. And so the Holy Spirit is saying different things to different people. But I, I feel very strongly in my spirit to those that have been walking with God and practicing this oneness. He's saying, what can I do for you now? Because you have crossed over. You have been faithful. And he's saying to you, what can I do for you now? And the Lord wants you to come to the throne of grace boldly and say, Lord, this is what I would like you to do for me now. This is what I'd like you to do for you now. Remember, God gets excited about bold requests. That's why you've been hearing the Spirit of God for the last couple weeks out of me. That he wants us to enter 2022 in bold faith, bold expectation, expectations. Not lowering our expectations because of things that didn't happen in the past. But get cleansed of all that and increase our expectations. And say, Father, Father, you said to come into the throne of grace boldly where there's help in time of need. That's what thrills the Father. Anything else is dishonoring him. Honoring God is that bold faith. Never quit on that bold faith because God means what he says and says what he means. So let's see what happens. The mentee, the protege, says to the mentor, Elijah, please let me inherit two shares of your spirit. Elijah replied, you have asked for something very difficult. If you see me being taken from you, you will have it. Notice what's going on. What is the mentor saying? He's saying if you continue in this focus and let nothing distract you or derail you, that is so powerful word. Because the enemy's always trying to distract and derail you in one way or another. And that's where we say, no, 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 no. Be quiet. Be quiet. Voice of disappointment, be quiet. Voice of discouragement, be quiet. I'm following my God. He is the Father and He loves me and He's for me. And I'm not going to quit on Him. I'm going to cross over and I'm going to see the goodness of God, the glory of God that God wants me to see in the land of the living. Bam! That's what the Lord is looking for. That bold faith. So let's continue. He goes on to say, "You, if you see me, being taken up, you will receive this. If not, you will not. If not, you will not. If not, you will not. Listen, there's rewards for diligently seeking the heart of God. It just does not happen out of a vacuum. 
God is sovereign and his mercy is amazing and his forgiveness is amazing. But there's something called diligent focus. Practicing diligent faith per, uh, produces something that diligent, a non-diligent faith will not produce. We are always loved. But there's certain things that will not manifest without that practicing oneness, without practicing hearing the Word of God, believing the Word of God, exercising the Word of God, doing the Word of God. Are you with me out there? Give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs up. Come on now. Let's go. Let's, let's launch into 2022. I'm just about done, but you aren't even concerned whether I'm done because it's so good the Spirit of God is pouring into our hearts today. Uh, resurrecting some of us, affirming some of us, confirming some of us, saving some of us for the first time, rescuing some of us from drowning in the, in the waters of disappointment and discouragement. There's many things that are happening right now by the Spirit of God because God is that God that loves to multiply. God is the God of many flavors and He can do many things when just one word or one sentence or one message comes out of us. That's who our God is. He's a miracle working God and there's nothing too hard for him. Let's see if I can finish this up. So it goes on to say, as soon as the mentor, Elijah said that, if you continue, Elisha, to focus on me, and if you see me going up, it says, as they continue walking and talking, notice they continue walking and talking. They continue walking and talking. We're in a series about oneness, which is walking and talking with God on a 24-7 basis. So much that my wife has brought in the unction of dreams that God even wants to talk to us in the night season. That's how much he wants to encourage us. He's the master encourager, and he wants to even help us when you are sleeping. So go to bed with expectation that God's going to talk to me tonight. He's going to encourage me tonight. So let's continue and try to finish this up. As they continue to walk and talk, a chariot of fire with horses of fire suddenly appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went up into heaven in the whirlwind. Can you imagine this? This is a true story. Out of heaven, a fiery chariot, chariot with fire coming off of horses, Goes right in between. I mean, right now, a fiery chariot with fiery horses comes whoosh down from heaven and separates the two of us. You're the Elijah and I'm the Elisha. Now, a lot of people, when they have those supernatural experiences, they got afraid and fell on their face and, and, and closed their eyes. But not even that, not even that caused Elisha. To close his eyes. Right. Not even that. Not even that. So the Lord wants us to stay focused. Whether it's a distraction. Or whether it's something glorious that happens. Keep your focus on the Lord. Keep your focus on the one that has been sent. Or the ones that have been sent to minister to you. Don't get caught up in the hoopla. Of even the glory of God. And the supernatural. Don't lose your focus. Stay rooted and grounded. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Nothing's going to move me from God loves me in this oneness that I'm rooted and grounded that God loves me. End of story. That's the kind of oneness that God wants us to talk about in this month of January so we can experience a 2022 and a double portion of his goodness like never before. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So the fiery horses and the fiery chair came. Elijah went up in the whirlwind. We got wind. Come, you know, imagine this whirlwind going on. Elisha picked up the mantle that had fallen off Elijah. Notice, he was still watching, so he saw what came down. He came down, he saw it. Elijah picked up the mantle that had fallen off Elijah and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle Elijah had dropped and struck the waters. And he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He asked. He struck the waters himself and they parted to the right and the left. And Elisha crossed over when the sons of the prophets from Jericho who were facing him saw what was going on. They said the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. That is the benefit of oneness. Here's what the Lord said to me this morning. And I want to make sure I read it. That this diligent focus 
causes something new to manifest in your life. God does not tell us to do something without a purpose in mind, without a reward in mind. He is not kidding. He is not kidding. He is not kidding. And the devil knows that he's not kidding. That's why the devil works on you every single day to try to get you not into the word of God, not into praise, not into prayer, not into thanksgiving, because he knows all those things are going to cause oneness and that you will overcome every work of darkness. He already knows that. God wants to put that knowing inside of you. So your value of oneness becomes your highest priority because whatever you value the most becomes your priority and your priorities become your habits and your habits become your life and your life becomes your legacy and it becomes what you are rewarded for in heaven. This oneness is what Jesus himself walked in, whether they were uh, praising him or whether they wanted to throw him off of a cliff. Je the lifestyle of Jesus was oneness with the Father Oneness with the Father. Oneness with the Father. That was the lifestyle of Jesus. And because of it, he was resurrected. And he experienced, he crossed over. And he experienced the miraculous. And that's what the Lord wants you to experience. But you know what? Here's the most mature faith possible. Whether I cross over and experience the miraculous or not. Whether my diligent focus brings me pleasure or some new manifestation in my life, I'm going to give God what he wants every second of the day. The, the honor and the glory and the attitude, am I doing what pleases God right now? Am I bringing him glory right now? When you have that mindset, see, that's the how. We've talked about the what. We've talked about the why. Now we're talking about the how. My wife started actually out in the how. We're going full circle back to the how. And this is how. It's your thinking. I'm going to live for God's pleasure. I'm going to give him what he deserves no matter if what's manifesting in my life. And I'm telling you, when you have that dogmatic, dogmatic diligent uh, attitude, you will have a diligent focus that will produce more good in your life and the good in, in other people's life. And you're going to get to heaven and God's going to say to you, Woo! That was amazing. I've been watching you on earth, uh, and that was good stuff. Now enter in uh, to the joy of your God, into the joy of the Lord. That's what scripture says. He says, thou good and faithful one. This is the number one faithful thing that you want to do on a daily basis, oneness with my Father. Now let me just see if there's something else the Lord wants me to share with you. And I think it's this right here, and we're going to end. Here it is. I'm going to put away the computer. I'm going to hand it to my wife. And I am going to end in the two minutes. I know my wife has something to say, but here we go. This is it. God wants us to enter in to complete oneness with him. What does that mean? If you're not saved, if you don't know you're born again, then today's the day to give your heart to Jesus. This is the day to believe the message. This is the day... To choose forgiveness. If you know Jesus, don't bring any unforgiveness into 2022. Come into 2022 with an attitude of Romans 8.28. If you have a Romans 8.28 attitude, you will soar and you will see great things happen if you practice a Romans 8.22. But God wants you to begin right now. Like I said, you want oneness with, with Jesus, the Father, Holy Spirit? Say yes to Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. I choose to believe it. He paid for my sins. We say thank you, Jesus, for paying for my sins. I believe that you died and you went to heaven for me and there's a place that you're building for me. I want to experience eternal life. Say yes to Jesus. For the people that know Jesus, this is it right here. Here's your prescription right here. To have greater oneness and keep your oneness right here. Go into 2022. 2022 and experience I believe there's a double portion there's something that the, the something new that God wants to do so let's God wants you to go into 2022 untethered think of your sh yourself like a ship tethered against the the pier in a harbor you're not called to stay in the harbor you're called to the high seas to make an impact in the nations and so the things that try to tether you tether you to that peer are things like unforgiveness. So just make a decision and pray this prayer with me right now. I forgive anyone in the past, 
anyone in my last 63 years that have made me sad, I forgive them right now and I bless them right now. And continue in that prescription and you will soar instead of sink no matter what happens in relationships. And number two, Romans 8, 28. Go into 2022 with boldness. All things in the past, all things in the present, and all things in the future are going to work together for my good bang. I'm telling you, you use that one and two prescriptions, you will soar in 22. And you will see the more that God wants you to see. And you will be a blessing to people like you've never been a blessing to people. You will be a life-giving person. The seen realm will not intimidate you because your focus is on the unseen God. The unseen realm where there's more for you than against you. And that's the truth. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Come on, finish it off. So one of the scriptures that just keeps resonating in my heart is in Isaiah 43, where it says, God, be, he says, behold, I am doing a new thing. It's springing forth. Can you perceive it? And that's very key because many times in life, we just kind of go through life and we're not looking to perceive what God is doing. This is a very new time in history. God is going to do things that he has never done before. And the word that I had gotten to share to complete the service today is accelerate. You know, an accelerant is something that is added to ingredients to cause them to launch. And that's what Pastor's been talking about today. We're called to be launched in 2022 in new ways, in new directions, in new relationships, or new things that God wants to do. But that cannot happen if we are not perceiving what is springing forth, what God wants to blow on, what he is focused on. It's really good because whatever you are influenced the most, by. whatever you influence the most by is, is, is just causes that perception. Correct. If you're being influenced by the voice of the Lord and the things that you're saying and receiving them more than the words of what has happened or is happening, then you're going to be able to say amen to what you're saying. Right. You're going to be, so that key principle of what are we under the influence of and practicing that is so key to receiving what you as the prophet are saying. Right. And so what I sensed is I'm, I'm going to talk and, and bring this full circle into giving. We worship God, we honor God in giving Him our first fruits. What does that mean? That everything that He has given us, as far as adding to us, because of the gifts and talents He's given us, that we are able to provide income for ourselves, for our families, our livelihood. When we give Him back the very first, what we're saying is, God, I recognize that this is all from You. Yeah. And I want to give You my very best. I want to give You my yeah. first fruits on the first day of the week. Yeah. Can, can I encourage you, stay in oneness when it comes to finances. So many people click out of okay. walking with God when it comes to finances. Don't let that happen. You'll miss out on something powerful. Right. And that's when we're talking about an accelerant finances many times is the fuel that God uses to propel us into new things and new places. But when we take away that opportunity from him, he can't, he doesn't have it to work with because we've not given it. Remember, God is a gentleman. He will not just take things from you. He is looking for you to freely give as you have freely received. And so our heart is that we can help accelerate that process in your life in the lives of all the people that we touch around the world. And so in this time, uh, there'll be in the side panel the opportunity to give. If you have our app or you're on our app, you can just go to the giving section. Many of you do that. But we appreciate you being faithful to the Lord because we want to be faithful to Him and give in to the things that He has called us to in order to launch this ministry and what God wants to do through you even further in 2022. So 2022 is going to be a time where things are really going to accelerate. And I'm going to leave you with a funny story. The pastor was talking about putting on your seatbelt. He didn't know I was going to share this in my notes. But a couple weeks ago, for the first time, I played video games with some of my grandchildren. And I think it took me three days to recover because I was not used to all of the movement and how fast 
It was some type of a race car game, I think. Yeah. Mar Mario or something. Yeah. And, but there were four screens, and I could be easily distracted by what other people were doing. And so that got me a little bit anxious, and so I found that I was going up on wheels, on, and, and the whole screen was tipping to where everybody was starting to feel motion sickness. Why does that happen? Because we get distracted in the, the pace that God is now accelerating us into. We need to keep our focus on what he is saying for us. We need to put on that seatbelt because he truly is going to accelerate things. And he has prepared you up till now. 2022 is the year that we have been prepared to go into. So even though even though these last few weeks may not have been what you thought, recognize that God has been preparing you for what you're about to head into. Remember, delay is not denial. Right. It's preparation preparation. It's preparation. It's going to be better than what you thought. Joseph was being prepared. He stayed in oneness. Yeah. And he was prepared for the palace and he made an impact on the nation. That's what we're called to do out of our oneness with God. We love you. And then I have a few announcements. Oh, quick announcements. You can love them. Go. So uh, we plan to be back in person next Sunday. So pray the snowstorms the way they're talking about or that they're minor or we don't have to deal with that on Sunday. But we plan to see you in person. Meanwhile, we have an entire video library, again, on your phone, on your app, or you can go to our website. Testimonies. We have so many. Right. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to do a contest this month where put your name in a hat if you've been giving us testimonies and we want to give you a special blessing because your growth is really important to us. Also, we have a coat outreach going on. So bring winter coats that you're not wearing or your family isn't wearing. We want to get them out to the people who need them. Thirdly, we're doing something called Operation Simplify. So if you have some things, ladies, in your home that you just don't want anymore in your decor. Or, or you see hearing the Lord saying it's time to let go of. Time to let go of. You can bring it in on the 24th. And we're just going to have a free shopping night. So whatever you need to freshen your house or to bless somebody, inspire someone, we're going to do some trade-off and it's going to be an awesome time. So that happens January 24th. Uh, next week, we hope to be back in the office to print your contribution forms, those of you who do your taxes early. And we also have started a community board. So in the foyer, you're going to see a board where you can put down if you have any needs, maybe you're in need of uh, something specific that somebody has in the congregation. Maybe you uh, need a few hours of work. Um, what maybe you have a prayer request but whatever it is you can put it up on that board people can take a look at it and they can contact you it's another way we can come into oneness we're activating this thing called oneness this month so we're excited to bring that to you as well so let's honor him this week amen let's value let's say no to the sin of familiarity so no dishonor comes into our relationships and value she's a gift from God I'm a gift from God you're a gift from God Let's focus, let's have an identity focus, not a behavior focus, and you'll walk in a freshness, and you'll walk in a new oneness mm -hmm. with him, with each other, and give Jesus what he prayed for, unity in his body. We love you and we bless you in his name, his power, his authority, mm -hmm. and that authority comes from Jesus. Amen. Bless you. See you next week. Thanks for watching.